The terrible cruelty suffered by child migrants sent to Australia from England has been in the headlines lately with the release of the movie Oranges and Sunshine. Both the British and Australian governments have apologised, but the Fairbridge Foundation involved in the scheme has refused to agree to a settlement. Today, 65 former students of the Fairbridge Farm School started unprecedented court action. They're suing the organisation and both the federal and state governments, claiming they turned a blind eye to years of abuse. Deborah Cornwall reports. I never had a childhood like so many here. It was taken from me. So today we start in earnest a fight for justice. Many have suffered terribly. Their lives have been really ruined by what happened to them at, these, at this school. Once home to 900 British children, it's almost four decades since Fairbridge Farm School closed its doors. But it's only now, well into middle age, many of those children are starting to give up their terrible secrets. You may like me to sister this one. Launching a class action today against Fairbridge and the state in the hope that finally they'll be heard. I would cry till I felt I was going to break inside. I'd curl up in a fetal position. I can remember curling up in the corner and just wanting to die as a child. He molested me when I was five years old. And I do remember sitting on the steps and at night time when I went to bed rocking backwards and forwards in my bed. And he tore my pants off and he sodomised me. And I, I was about 13. I don't know how they can do it to people. Based in central New South Wales, Fairbridge Farm School was sponsored by the grace and favour of British royalty, held up at the time as a shining beacon of the child migrant scheme. They are soon on their way to the Fairbridge Farm at Molon, one of a series of farm schools founded by the late Kingsley Fairbridge, a Rhodes Scholar who conceived the idea whilst at Oxford 40 years ago. British waifs, as young as four, were sent across the globe, sacrificed by their parents on the promise of a better life for their children. The idea was to take these miserable wretches from the underclass and the underbelly of, of British society and to make them long-limbed and healthy, toiling in the sun. Former Fairbridge ward and high-profile public administrator David Hill has often been touted by Fairbridge as one of its greatest success stories. His memories of Fairbridge were Dickensian dormitories, fly-blown food and relentless chores. See, I was one of the lucky ones. I didn't get there. I was 12, nearly 13. I had a twin and an older brother. I was only there three years. I had a mum. It wasn't until 2006, after teaming up with an old classmate to produce a book and documentary on Fairbridge, he learned of the horrific abuses many of the children had endured and the magnitude of their betrayal by the authorities. When I first came here, I would have been probably about that high. Ian Bailiff says his experience was typical of many of the Fairbridge children. Terrorised by the cottage mothers who were supposed to protect them, he says most grew up believing their parents were dead or had abandoned them, only to discover decades later efforts by parents to get them back had been blocked by Fairbridge, insisting the children were happier without them. Why would it be happy? He used to flog the living daylights out of us. I had no mother, no father, no one to complain to, and we were being brutalised by this, this, this awful woman. We were always demeaned. We were constantly told that we were there because we were gutter snipes, we were slum children, we would never ever make anything of ourselves. In fact, Fairbridge Farm only ever accepted children with IQs above 90. But once at Fairbridge, the children's grades dropped so dramatically, more than 40% of them would later be deemed, in the language of the day, educationally retarded. And most of the children forced to leave school early anyway because Fairbridge relied almost entirely on child labour. 
These people were cheated. These people, even aside from the cases of abuse and neglect, uh, these people were denied the opportunities that were promised to them. Half of these people can't even read or write properly. They're semi-literate. They, they were never even given a decent education. Former children's institutions have since admitted what they did to the child migrants was wrong, even barbaric. And both British and Australian governments have apologised for the damage done. But Fairbridge Foundation alone, it seems, has continued to deny it was aware of any serious mistreatment of children under its care. And we're talking about children who were four, five, six, seven years of age. Complaints were coming out of the farm and up through the system, and yet nothing was done to rectify this situation for these children. Lawyers for Fairbridge and the state have declined to comment during the proceedings and have called on the former wards to produce evidence of their allegations. The Fairbridge children now have their day in court. But, says David Hill, any compensation will almost certainly be too little, too late. Every childhood lasts a lifetime. You maim a child and you'll end up with a maimed adult.